September 1939. The German foe begins its ruthless march of conquest and sets the stage for World War II. Poland's 34 million inhabitants, crushed, scattered, and enslaved. Tens of thousands of square miles of territory shrink before the movement of lightning armored columns. Poland and the world learn the meaning of a grim new word, Blitzkrieg. Here is shown the initiation of that phase of modern warfare. These pictures of the preparation for attack and later the actual combat were all made by German frontline cameramen. Therefore, they stress Nazi superiority. Success is unimpeded as Hitler's divisions move against outnumbered Polish defenders. Later, on other world battlefronts, the Allies are to destroy the myth of the invincibility of the Nazi armies. But this is Hitler at the peak of his armed might, and the record of a nation overrun in just days is of military as well as historical importance. The spark is set off in the free city of Danzig. Nazi secret agents had long plotted the revolt against law and order. Germany called it liberation. The world knew that Danzig represented the ignition of the European powder keg. The excuse for Hitler's hordes to begin their destructive campaign of conquest. Here is the historic last stand of Danzig's loyal defenders. They're entrenched in the city's post office and under repeated fire of Nazi trained militiamen. Taking cover behind an advancing tank, the attackers move in. Gasoline is sprayed on the building, and its doom is sealed. On September 1st, Danzig is incorporated into the Reich, and all Europe is aflame. World War II is a reality. Nazi regulars move up. The Germans brazenly call it counterattack with pursuit. The civilized world knows it as the unleashing of unheard of military might. With little to stand in their way, the Nazi divisions roar across the Polish countryside and reveal for the first time the machines and weapons that are to terrorize a freedom-loving people. Military observers see the Nazi lightning warfare as setting the style for modern battle. Only a well-devised counter blitz can stem the flanking and pincer movements of the wily Germans. The motorcycles bring up machine gunners for the opening of the attack. Camouflage is used to best advantage. speed the advance as a Polish town is about to fall. Before the day is out, the Nazis have occupied the town which is still burning and in complete ruin. equipment testifies to the Polish route. There's no halt in the wrecked town. The military timetable calls for the rushing up of troops for more blitz attacks. The German strategy is to isolate Polish forces as quickly as possible. So the Nazi columns move according to prearranged schedule. 30 to 37 miles per day is the German claim.
A strategic bridge across the Vistula River has been blown up by retreating Polish soldiers. But in their haste, they were unable to ensure its complete destruction. The enemy will be delayed, but temporary repair is not impossible for skilled mechanics to accomplish in fast time. A German sapper detachment sent ahead of the fighting unit goes to work. These men are trained to construct emergency roads as well as bridges. The hastily constructed span is quickly put to use by the advancing Nazis. Many units don't even wait for the repairs. When bridges are scarce, shallow waters are forded. The blitz-minded German generals even defy fatigue. Long lines of tired troops are kept moving against the poles. The operation is based on the principle that contact, once made, should never be lost. Naps are snatched on the move. Complete halt comes only during the lull between battle movements. At all times, weapons are kept clean and ready for instant use. This enemy of ours has mastered every technique necessary to the maintenance of efficient fighting contingents. The Polish harbor of Gdynia. For the defense of this vital seaport, the Poles have sunk ships to block the entrance of German warships. The Nazis direct their fire across the harbor. Military and naval forces are cooperating to bring about complete destruction of Polish defense installations. After a thorough bombardment, the outnumbered garrison of Gdynia surrenders. The Nazi air arm plays a major role in the wanton destruction of Polish territory. The method is now a familiar one. First reconnaissance planes go aloft to secure valuable photographic data. The aerial pictures will show the movement and position of Polish troops and also the undefended sectors that will supply easy targets for Nazi bombs. Immediately on landing, the valuable pictures are rushed to the field developing unit. The Germans have stated that information thus revealed has formed the base for much of their decisive military operations in Poland. This photograph reveals a truck convoy, closely bunched at a crossroad. If proper distance and interval had been kept between vehicles, they would not be the target shown here.
ground and air force raids are worked out with greater unity through the use of the aerial photographs. the preparation for attack by German fighter planes and bombers. Cases of bombs are continually unpacked, ready to supply the big ships as they land and take off again. wave of destructive aircraft leaves the field. They are assigned to swarm ahead of the land armies and destroy complete fortifications, batteries, marching troops, railway junctions, and important highway links. several pockets. A Stuka dive bomber attacks an important railway junction. He swoops down thousands of feet before releasing his bomb. as he straightens out, barely 600 feet above the target. The Polish anti-aircraft fire is not sufficient to hold off this winged enemy. An awful panorama of ruin spreads out below. Bridges and communications have been destroyed. The railroad at this point has been rendered useless. Nazi bombs also knock out the heavy armored cars which the Polish army had hoped would see effective action against the enemy. The siege of Warsaw. The big attack begins 31 miles outside the capital. Shells are dropped into Warsaw without let up as day by day the Nazis forge a tighter ring of steel around the almost helpless city. of fires in the city send up huge clouds of smoke. Warsaw is lost. The 
vicious Nazi attack has left the city in ruins. The Blitzkrieg has won the first round. In less than 30 days, Poland has fallen. Warsaw's final surrender comes on September 27th. Even as the last shot is fired, the first of the conquerors are already within the city's boundaries. Here again, the wreckage testifies to the fury of the Nazi assault. The occupation of Warsaw by the enemy is now complete. The Poles have fought bravely against this foe, but were overwhelmed by the sheer superiority of numbers and fighting equipment. Polish defenders come up to surrender their arms. The Germans claim sizable quantities of guns and ammunition taken throughout the country. There was no time for the Poles to destroy their weapons. So quickly did the Nazis move in and dominate each position. prisoners in long line. 500,000 is the estimated total figure. This was the challenge of conquest Hitler hurled at the universe. Arrogant, well-trained, the Nazis marched through Warsaw streets. The world was permitted to view this display of military pomp and expected to bow before Germany's might. But the events of years following Poland's setback were to tell another story. The Allies are fighting to prove that these goose-stepping legions are not supermen, that the events of September 1939 shall never happen again.